Hello, my name is Alcides Rodriguez and I'm the bass clarinetist with Atlanta Symphony. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about playing the alto clarinet. I am very delighted you have chosen to play the alto clarinet. The alto clarinet is a wonderful instrument and it has a beautiful tone that adds a special color to the orchestra sound or to the band sound. You can have a lot of fun playing the alto clarinet either in the band or in small music uh, ensembles like chamber groups, like clarinet quartets, etc. I hope this video helped you develop your skills to play the alto clarinet so you can have as much fun playing this instrument as I do. Now, before you put your instrument together, always make sure that your case is in the right position. Make sure that the top of the case is on the top. So one of the best ways to figure out whether your case is in the right position is Usually, you will have the logo of the company that makes the instrument on top, or sometimes there is a pocket for your music on top of the case. So that's, that's the best sign that the case is in the right position. Some of you are probably very familiar with the clarinet. Maybe you started on the clarinet or are still playing the clarinet. So before I show you how to put the auto clarinet together, I would like to go over a few important differences between the clarinet and the alto clarinet so you can avoid mechanical problems with the clarinet. So, the alto clarinet is a bigger instrument than the clarinet and both upper and lower joint are pretty much the same length. So the way you can tell the difference between them is that the lower joint has bigger cups for the pads in the bottom and also has these longer rods and longer keys and bigger too. So just make sure that when you when you hold the lower joint, don't grab it through these rods or the keys because they bend very easily. Make sure you always grab it here by the keys and that way you will be putting pressure on the pads. And the pads are tough and they also can be replaced easily. Okay, so then the bell is shaped like this with a curve and it's made out of metal. And on the alto clarinet, we don't have a barrel like in the clarinet, but we have what is called a neck. And the neck is curved like this and it's also made out of metal. Okay, now that we know the differences, let's put it together. The first thing to do is, before you start putting your instrument together, get your reed wet. There are two ways to do this. You can either put it in your mouth, like this, inserting the, the top of the mouthpiece, the thin tip, into your mouth, and hold it there while you put the instrument together, or you can put it into a small container with water, like this. So the reed will soak as you put the clarinet together. Okay, so one important thing is that your instrument might be a new instrument and sometimes the corks might be a little bit swollen, the corks in the joints like this one or this one right here. So I would recommend if they are a little bit too hard to put together to use some cork grease. Just get the cork grease and rub it around a little bit, you know, like this, and then with your finger go like this. And that will make the process of assemble the clarinet a lot easier. The two pieces we're gonna put together first are the lower joint and the bell. Just slide the bell in, like that, and then swing it in to bring it so that the front of the bell is aligned with this keys right there, with the front keys, okay? One that, once that is in place, let's assemble the upper joint. Grab the upper joint with your left hand, and one thing that you really have to be careful with is that there are two bridge keys one here on the upper joint and one in the lower joint. Those two keys 
has to align. So the best way to do it is, as you hold the upper joint, make sure you are pressing the D key down so you can bring this lever up. So slide the upper joint in, keeping both keys, both bridge keys apart. And once the upper joint is all the way in, then swing the keys together until they align like that. Okay. Once we have the instrument together, I'm going to go ahead and put my peg on. Rest it on the floor and then I'm going to tighten it. Some instruments, depending on the brand of the instrument and on the model, don't have a peg. So if you don't have a peg on your instrument, you're going to have to use a neck strap. A neck strap, you just put it over your neck, and your instrument should have a little ring like this on the thumb key. So you can actually hook the neck strap right on. See. And that, that way you will hold the instrument. So you will need a peg. Okay. Now, if your instrument has a peg, you can also use an extra strap if you want to, to have some extra support. I recommend that. Okay. So now that you have the instrument together, let's rest it on the case. And we're going to put the mouthpiece on the neck. So make sure... Take the mouthpiece cap off, the ligature off, and we're going to assemble the mouthpiece onto the neck, just like this. So make sure that while facing the neck, you know, towards you, the flat part of the mouthpiece, this part where the reed is supposed to go, is facing you, and also facing down towards the floor. Okay. So now that we have this together, we're going to go ahead and put the reed on. So let's take the reed out of the water. And I'm going to put the flat surface of the reed on the flat surface of the mouthpiece, like that. I'm going to hold it with my thumb right here in the bottom. And I'm going to use my index and thumb on my left hand to align it and keep it straight on the mouthpiece, like that. The top of the reed should be flush with the top of the mouthpiece, okay? Once we have that in place, I'm going to slide the ligature on. Before you do this, make sure and be really careful not to damage the top of the reed. So just do it carefully. Slide it in. And usually the mouthpieces or your mouthpiece should have a little line just like this that is going to indicate you that that's pretty much where the position where the ligature should be. If your mouthpiece doesn't have those lines, then you can also use this, this U shape on your reed as a guidance. So the ligature should always be under the U shape of the reed or under that line on the mouthpiece. Once you have the ligature in place, make sure that the reed is aligned and then just tighten the screws lightly just until the screws stop. Don't, don't force it, just until the screws stop. That'll be good. Okay. Once we have the reed in place, let's pick up the instrument from the case and let's assemble the neck into the clarinet. It is very important, once you have it together, that the reed aligns with the thumb key, with the register key, and also with the thumb rest on the lower joint. So 
doesn't have to be necessarily exactly aligned with them, but somewhere on that position. But the best way is to try it. Once you have it together, you can start trying it and, and, and find the position where it feels comfortable for you. Okay? So now that we have it together, we are ready to play. Good posture will allow you to use your air more efficiently and to play the instrument more comfortably. Good posture to play the alto clarinet should be sitting on the edge of the chair with your back straight like this. Your upper body should be almost lift. And your feet should be flat on the ground. I always use to have one foot slightly forward and the other one slightly backwards so I can use them to balance my body. So I can move even either back and forth without losing my balance. Okay. The alto clarinet is an instrument that requires a lot of air. So make sure you always take a full breath, inhaling through your mouth all the time. Your neck and shoulders should be relaxed. And your shoulders shouldn't move up when you breathe. Make sure they are always relaxed. But the area around your waist should expand with every breath, like this. When you exhale, make sure you also exhale completely. I'm going to show it again. Now, I'm going to do it with an instrument. It's very important. When you breathe with a mouthpiece in your mouth, you should inhale through your corners. And it's also okay to take your lower lip off the reed to do this. But it's important that your upper teeth should always remain on the mouthpiece. So it's going to be something like this. Hand position is very important. Your fingers should be curved, almost as if you are holding a softball. If you let your arms down, just hang down like this and relax them. And then slowly lift them like this. You will see that your fingers are naturally curved. That's the position they should be in when you play the clarinet. Also, notice that your wrists shouldn't be bent like this. They should be straight, both wrists. So practice this. Relax your, your arms down, and then bring them up slowly. And you see, observe your fingers and your wrists. And this is the best position to play the instrument. Now, let's do it with the instrument. To hold the alto clarinet, place your right thumb under the thumb rest, right here, and your left thumb on the thumb key, this key right here. That's where the thumb should be. And the pads of your fingers on the front keys, like this. That's basically how you will hold it. The pinkies are going to be in charge of this keys right here. You will only play one at a time. See, this is what the pinkies are going to be doing. Now, it's very important also that the position of a thumb on your left hand is at a diagonal. Almost think about pointing at 2 o'clock on a clock. Because if it's in this way, then you will be creating a lot of tension on your wrist because it, it's going to be bent. So the best way is to keep it at a diagonal like that. And also, the thumb is also going to be in charge of playing the register key, this key right here. So once you do that, make sure that you always, always roll the thumb like this. Just roll it to touch it instead of lifting it. 
You never lift it to play the ski, just always roll when you are coming from this ski. Because the instrument is fixed on the floor, it's important that you experiment a lot with a, with a peg until you get the right position. So keeping, remember, back straight, feet flat on the floor. And for this, the peg is gonna be really important for this. So you shouldn't change the position to adjust the height of your instrument. Just always use the peg. So basically the instrument should come to your mouth like this. Okay. So for that, I want it, I want the peg to be in the right position so I can use it to adjust. So in, in this case, I want it a little bit higher. So I don't have to move my head. Right here is a little bit too low, so I go a little bit higher until it's just perfect. So that's where the peg is going to be very important. If your instrument doesn't have a peg, you can use an X strap to do that too. The neck straps are also adjustable. So you can do the same. You can make it lower or higher depending on what you want. But with the neck strap, I'm gonna take the, the peg off so you can see it better. It should be the same with the neck strap. You should be able to just bring the instrument to your mouth. The embouchure is a very important part of playing the alto clarinet and creating a good sound. To form the alto clarinet embouchure, roll your lower lip over your teeth like this. And then point your chin down like this. It should be flat. And also bring your corners in. Almost like saying, ooh. Bring them in. Once you have that in place, then let's put the rib and the mouthpiece on your bottom lip like this. At that point, you should bring your upper teeth on to the top of the mouthpiece. And I want to point out that the angle should be that your upper teeth are a little bit towards the tip and the lower lip is lower, like this. Not like this. We wanna create some, some, something close to a 45 degree angle on the mouthpiece. So it's important that the lower lip is lower on the reed than the upper teeth. Okay? So once we have that in place, tighten your mouth around the mouthpiece And there you have the embouchure. Practice this a few times so you can get more comfortable with it. I highly recommend it that you practice this in front of a mirror so you can really monitor what you are doing with the embouchure. It's very important. Another aspect that is very important in the embouchure is the tongue. The tongue position is very important and should be in an arched position. And the best way to achieve an arch position in your tongue is by saying E. E. When you say E, your tongue is automatically shaped like an arch. So once you have your embouchure in place and you, and you tighten your lips around the mouthpiece, make sure you are saying E also. And that's the way the tongue should be to create like a perfect uh, embouchure to play the auto clarinet. Okay, now that we have the instrument put together and the reed and the mouthpiece assembled, let's try making a first sound. First thing is, form your embouchure around the mouthpiece, take a deep full breath through the corner of your mouth, then close your mouth and you're gonna touch the tip of the reed gently with your tongue as you blow air into the instrument saying T. Just like this. Okay. 
I'm gonna do it again. Do that several times until you feel comfortable producing that sound. Tonguing is also very important. It is basically how we start most of the notes on the alto clarinet. In order to tongue, you are going to use the tip of your tongue, not necessarily the very tip, but somewhere around here. And also you're gonna use the tip of your reed. Basically the tongue is gonna touch the tip of the reed. And again, not necessarily the very edge right here, but somewhere around this area. So when I tongue on the alto clarinet, this is what it looks like. One of the exercises you can do to practice the tonguing is playing a whole note or a long tone and then play repeated notes by saying T, 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 like this. That way you will get used to blow one steady stream of air and also to start moving your tongue. 